lead as soon as Schechter went into the pits. Michael Andretti has come to second place now. Michael Andretti had a penalty earlier on, if you can recall, for running over a hose as we ride on board with him right now, going up through turn three. Going to hit the short shoot here between three and four. And he'll be coming in this time, guys. A low line going into four. Ah! Michael Andretti on the pit road. Comes in behind Loren Radon, who stands all over the brakes to slow down. They have to slow down by that pylon you saw off at the right side. Well, I thought Michael was going to get him. And remember, Paul, last year, Michael Andretti ran into a car in front of him and knocked the wing off. Cost him a real good shot at the race here. Almost did the same thing there. DeFerrin remains on the track. He's the leader. Scott Sharp now comes to second place on the track. Cheever is third. Paul Tracy is fourth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't have the right rear on that one. No fuel's got a problem. Not the day that Robbie Buell anticipated. You remember how fast he was last year? And here's Michael, maybe a little long on that, but out he goes. Long stop for Michael. Now they've got it back on the Jackson, try to get Buell's right rear on. Paul, we talk about the pressure on the drivers here at Indy during the day, but it's also pressure on all those team members. Just to be able to change a tire in about eight or 10 seconds, the pressure is on them not only to do a fast job, but to get it on right. There's definitely butterflies in their stomach when their car comes into pit lane. Jill DeFerrin comes onto the pit road. Paul Tracy is already there and away. Well, Scott Sharp will pick up the lead. As the Penske team stops the first of their two cars on the 124th lap now. Paul, well, remember, for these drivers, the speed limit has come down 20 miles an hour this year. It's 60 miles an hour. Last year, it was 80. Only four years ago, it was 100 miles an hour on pit road. The service being completed now for Joe DeFerrin as the clock ticks away. Down off the jack. Maybe a problem right rear No, Everything okay in 11.7 seconds. And his teammate, Elio Castroneves, the defending champion, is also on his way to the Penske pits. This man, Scott Sharp, is the leader, but he should be in shortly as well. Gary, you talk about the pit speed limit. When I came here back in 1990, as you hear the radio contact coming from Scott Sharp's pit, he's going to be pitting the next time around for fuel and tires. When I was here in 1990, we had no pit speed limit. We used to come off a of turn four, enter into pit lane at 200 miles an hour. And I can tell you, trying to get the car slowed down into your pit lane was a real chore. The IRL has mandated some safety regulations throughout the year, and the pit speed limit, I think, is one of the best ones over the past few years. You know, that makes you wonder about Robbie Gordon, currently fifth. When he comes in now, he's going to be coming in from an entirely different pit. Sharp, the leader, is in. Watch your speed, position one on fuel. Watch His your teammate, Hunter Jr., is also in the pit. Till the Delphi car heads for the Kelly Pins. Robert, everything's open. Open in front. Felipe Giafoni picks up the lead. It's an easy, on the mark, on the mark. There should be no changes to the car. Here it's just fuel and tires for Scott Sharp. Robert Perez changing the front right. No mistake, very smooth. Under 12 seconds for Scott Sharp. And Paul, you talked about the tires before with the stickers. You can see there's no sticker on these tires at all. Just some yellow chalk marks that you can see from writing a code on the tire that all the teams have. These are scrubbed in tires. These are not brand new or fresh tires as we like to call them. So how about this? Giafoni and Gordon are the front two. And there's Giafoni. Alex Barron, as Robbie Gordon comes to the pits, comes into second place. So Gordon now making the stop. That one that we wondered about, and looks like he found the pit with no problem at all. Though it's a long way from where his pit was. All the way up at the other end, the north end of the pit. We're all away. Paul, you're absolutely right. A driver practices all throughout the month in his pit stop. Okay, I'll go full step on the bars. We're going to be in trouble for a while, guys. The radio contact that you had that you heard from Robbie Gordon, they changed the rear wicker on the wing. 
and also did some cockpit adjustments. Oh, what a great moment this has to be for Larry Blair and his team because his driver, Alex Barron, to go to the lead. Giafoni is in the pits. Watching, we're watching from the back, the camera at the front of the car is Morris Nunn's crew. Peter Parrott on the wall. He's on the radio talking to his driver. Had that earlier as This time they disengaged the fuel in the vent cleanly and he's gone. Gary mentioned Peter Parrott, the team management here, as we watch Alex Barron. Don't forget, Peter Parrott engineered some wins for Rick Mears here, including bringing him from a lap down to the win of the race. So Alex Barron is now the leader the Indianapolis 500. Everybody in San Diego and Southern California going to be going crazy with that one. Barron out in front at Indianapolis. We'll return with more of the 86th running of the Indianapolis 500 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Do I have what, Mom? I have the greatest mom. Lisa's my only daughter. Seems like she's called me every day for the last 11 years. When my mom told me about this unlimited plan, it was such a perfect thing for us. You can talk to anyone who has AT&T long distance at home for as long as you want for $19.95 a month. There was no thinking about it. She just said, you're doing it. And I was like, oh, okay. My daughter is a wonderful mother. She just knocks my socks off. You know? Call 1-800-REACH-OUT. This summer's biggest thriller isn't in theaters. It's on ABC, and it's a mystery you can solve. These are the unusual suspects. One is definitely the mole, but none can be trusted. I don't believe any word of your story. Mole 2, the ultimate spy game, starts with back-to-back -back episodes this Tuesday at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. begins June 8th on ABC. The Ford F-150 has an amazing appetite for power. Which gives it more available torque than Chevy, Dodge, or Toyota. Hi, I'm Jim Earl from Earl Brothers Transmission and Auto Repair, and I'm back in this transmission again. I get no respect. Cars today are designed with several computerized components. When it comes to complete auto care, you need an expert. You need Earl Brothers Transmission and Auto Repair. With highly trained technicians, nationwide warranty, free towing, and a free motor car, why go anywhere else? Okay, guys, let me out of here. Oh, no, not again. Frisbee? Water ski. No. Swim? No. Nah. I'm not getting out of this chair! Blue sky, sunlight, blue light. Our American Film Festival on the next Ebert and Roper. The 86th running of the Indianapolis 500 continues on ABC Sports. Back at the 86th running the Indianapolis 500, Alex Barron made routine service in a pit stop, and that gave the lead back over to Thomas Schechter. Most of the front runners are all right together on the racetrack, making for some incredible racing here. At the top, Schechter, DeFerrin, Tracy, one, two, three, then Michael Andretti, and then Scott Sharp. Paul, they're all doing that, mixed around some traffic. We saw Thomas Schechter earlier go three wide on the front stretch when we were away for a break. And I've had to tell you, I took a big gulp of air when he came down to turn one. Now, he just surprised me. He just went out and around Robbie Buell. Buell and Schechter both have infinity power in those cars. And they were trying to get Buell to be the rabbit to try and get Schechter an opportunity to save a little fuel. But Schechter was running so much faster, they just couldn't do it. There's the pit in, pit out. Last stop as everybody's completed... 
the fourth regular stop of the race. Others, of course, have completed more because of uh, issues that they've had mechanically. Ben Twelve. It's been an eventful day for Robbie Gordon. First, it was the fuel tank problem. They had to change pits. On this last stop, they wanted to put in a smaller wicker and have less downforce to free up the car. But the problem was the team didn't get the wicker in the rear wing before Gordon left the pit. They were very concerned, but Robbie said, hey, it actually feels better. Let's stick with it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I bet it feels better. Paul, oh, that can be a big change sometimes because the rear wicker helps keep air on the rear wing, which helps keep the back end stable. And through the race, sometimes drivers will actually have the rear wickers taken out. They'll remove some wing out of the front of the car to balance the change on the rear, and that's to make the car go through the air faster. Michael Andretti with Paul Tracy just ahead, battled for third. There'll be no team owners there, Paul. Well, look at that. All three of the Team Green cars running right together on the court. There was a report that this car, the Delphi car of Scott Sharp, showed a little smoke. You can hear some crackling, Paul. Listen to hear Paul, what radio second. communications might be, but he comes in slow. Paul, he pulled onto pit road. The engine, the, sh the shaking was still firing. But he was very, Dunn. very slow as he pulled the little pit road stall. Guys, I can tell you the disappointment for Just came on the radio and said the motor's dead, guys. Lift of his teammate, Al Unser Jr., currently 14th. And that red, white, and black car just out of the frame. Paul, we saw Scott Sharp there, and as you know, Paul... Scott is a neighbor of mine, and I can tell you, since last year, the first lap, first turn incident, he's wanted to get back to this race. He played a perfect race today. He was sitting back, doing the proper thing, sitting in third, probably had a car that was capable of winning the event. Michael with Sarah Fisher. Just ahead, trying to work Sarah and get around her. Sarah, of course, is two laps behind the leader of the race. Michael is currently fourth. Schechter, DeFerrin, Tracy and then Andretti. Paul, there may not be team orders for Michael Andretti and Paul Tracy, but they are exchanging information. During that last series of pit stops, Michael Andretti discussed making a change on the car. They ran down and talked to Paul Tracy's crew because Tracy had made that change earlier in the race. The Tracy's crew said it didn't work, so Michael Andretti's crew said, low, we won't do low, it. Car low, not there. Well, that's a benefit of teamwork. You can find out from your teammate what works and what doesn't. We've seen this many years in the past, especially if Penske was probably one of the ones that founded something like that. And here we watch Scott Sharp's car going back to the garage. It'll be a sad day for Scott Sharp. Well, better, though, than last year when it's the pole sitter. He spun, crashed on the very first turn. Log on to ESPN.com. The keyword is ABCIRL to check out our new speedcast real-time race results and the IRL Challenge Fantasy go Game. Low, go low, go low. Michael Andretti moves go on there, Sarah Fisher's low. Allegra Please. car. Puts her a little further back. Michael remains in fourth. A nice clean move. Michael's been trying to do that for quite a few laps. Now's not the time to take a risk when you're running with traffic. That could be a lap or two down. Boy, look at this. Felipe Giafoni as he comes up behind Sarah. Shows you the speed differential on the front stretch. And that comes from the turns, Paul. If you don't come off the turns at a high rate of speed, the car behind gets a run on you, gets to pick up that draft from the car breaking the hole in the air that's just in front of you, and you get to slipstream by. That's right. You used to teach at racing schools, didn't you? In fact, you instructed Paul Tracy. I did, Paul. Seems like a lot of years ago, but Paul Tracy's running strong enough now he just might be a contender here by the end of the race. He's third place. How was he as a student? He didn't listen to anything, much like Thomas Schechter's had a problem with Owen Snyder. Doesn't sound like much has changed. Schechter, DeFerrin, Tracy. Top three at Indianapolis. 142 laps are complete. Maybe 7-Eleven's new Go Go Taquitos are a little too tasty. Three spicy flavors and a crispy tortilla. They're a fresh new take on food to go. Ah. New on DVD.
behind enemy lines. Archangel is down, and I am on the run. It's heart-pounding action that pushes DVD to the limit behind enemy lines. Let's go get our boy back. Own it on DVD today. Tough enough to drive a Tacoma? Right, four rooms installed. Now, Dish Network is at Radio Shack, and getting four different programs in four different rooms is as easy as a $49.99 activation fee. For a limited time, get up to four receivers professionally installed in the first three months of the digital home plan free at Radio Shack. That's clear digital picture and CD quality sound in up to four rooms installed for only $49.99 from Dish Network. Now, at Radio Shack. The past teaches us the brickyard calls to us. The crowd champions us. And 52 wins at Indy gratify us. But after 100 years in business, it's the future that inspires us and keeps us going. This is the beginning of a new century for Firestone. ABC Sports exclusive coverage of the 86th running of the Indianapolis 500. Brought to you by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. TD Waterhouse, you're in control. Toyota, get the feeling. And Smirnoff Ice, intelligent nightlife. Back at the 86th running of the Indianapolis 500, Paul Tracy has been eclipsed now by Michael Andretti. Michael got around him and into third place. The leader is still Sean Thomas Schechter. Jack Aroot, it's been 26 laps since he last stopped. And Paul, he is coming very close to having the pit yet again. Before the race, Owen Snyder made a number of these little cheat sheets up. Each of them was based upon what type of fuel mileage they would get. 2.4 miles to the gallon, 2.3, 2.2, and so forth. They are getting such bad fuel mileage, he doesn't have a cheat sheet. So he's going to have to do all the math in his own head. Right now, as we look at the telemetry, there is only 5.41 gallons left in Thomas Schechter's tank. But one thing, Scott Goodyear, thus far, Schechter is showing a lot of focus and poise for being a rookie in Indianapolis. Jack, I think that's true because he's done a tremendous job here. All the pressures of the speedway, all the pressures he's had for those accidents that we talked about earlier in the show. But without a doubt, when he starts to come down to the final few laps here, or maybe within 10 laps, hopefully the emotions of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway won't get to him. One of the fastest laps of the day. Schechter up here at 226 and .4. And Michael, though, has been hauling up to speed in just the last few laps. Well, Paul, what that tells you right now is that Andretti's car is working better as the race goes on. Something that an experienced driver can work with his crew and get that car working the best at the end of the day when the run is most important. Eight different drivers have led today. Curiously, six of those have never led at the Indianapolis 500. That will no doubt be a thrill, but I'll tell you, you might think about it right away that you're leading a lap, but you only are focused on leading the last lap. Barnish, who is 13 laps behind the leader of the race, wisely came over to the left and let that high-speed group come right on by. Schechter is on the pit road. Schechter ready for his stop. 
This one will come on the 150th lap. Michael Andretti, second place, is due in in three laps. Still and, to Farron's the leader. And Paul, the advantage to Thomas Schechter is the fact that he has an open pit in front of him and nobody to bother him when he pulls back. <laughs> for Thomas Schechter. But boy, are they burning down the fuel tank. Again, brand new tires on the front, tires that have been scrubbed in a bit on the rear of the car. Right rear does the most work here. Jill DeFerrin now has the lead. Paul DeFerrin will be coming in in about seven laps. He's been uh, working the radio. He's concerned the track is hot, the track temperature rising, and with all the rubber on it, he said the car has been very slippery and very loose, so he's looking forward to getting in and getting some fresh tires. They've been getting 32 laps in their fuel window, so they're in a situation where this stop will take them to lap 189. Marlboro Team Kipinski and Joe Farah needs a yellow to go the distance. The DeFerrin do in. Michael Andretti do in as well, as is Paul Tracy. Thomas Schechter dropped down to 11th place with his stop on green. Coors Light most laps led remains. Rookie Thomas Schechter with 78. You see Gilles DeFerrin up in the lead. Well, you gotta know that the captain right now is coming up with a game plan about what to do. I heard the car might not be just perfect for him. And do they have the power to run with the Infinity cars if it's gonna come to a shootout close to the end? A lot of strategy is forming now, Paul. A lot of games are going to start to be played, and everybody's going to be looking over their shoulder to see what the other teams are doing down pit road. So the key to this running of the Indianapolis 500 may very well be if there is another caution, and if so, where? How long will it be? Will it be long enough to help Schechter? Michael and Freddie out of second, out of the pit road. Stays out, stays the leader. Nice and calm on the mark. Nice and calm on the mark. You hear his crew talking about stopping the car on the marks. There's some white tape right underneath the wheel, which the driver looks for when he goes into the pit lane. Kim Green on the radio. Should be one more scheduled stop after this. No changes on the arrow set up on the car. Waiting for the fuel. Decent stop, just over 12 seconds. My clock. Robbie Gordon made his stop. Shagiaki Atori did. So did Sarah Fisher and Scott Sharp. All at the same time. DeFerrin still the leader. Tracy is second. Giafoni third. Eddie Cheever Jr. is sitting in fourth. And Elio Castroneves is fifth. And Paul, you mentioned a little bit earlier on about the Generation 1, Generation 2 engines that Chevrolet has. And Penske's the only team right now that uses the Generation 1. Maybe the captain knows something that we don't know. Maybe they really do get better gas mileage. So we're waiting for DeFerrin to stop. I hate it when he does that. Sorry about the dust. <laughs> After the new roomy seven-passenger Chevy Trailblazer, everything else just seems kind of weak. Ah, I left the bagels in the jet. The new Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. What are you thinking about for the client lunch today? I'm thinking a frosty beer and a natural Angus burger. So, let's think of something a little more appropriate for a business luncheon, shall we, again? Hey, what were you thinking for the client lunch today? I'm thinking a frosty beer and a natural Angus cheeseburger. <clears throat> the Friday's take on working lunches? Keep business casual with a beer and our natural Angus cheeseburger. Eat what you love, love where you eat at Friday's. It has 
has over 20 million customers nationwide, works with nearly half the Fortune 1000, and provides the wireless network for BlackBerry and Palm. Bet you didn't know who's so big in business. Singular Wireless. What do you have to say? Okay. If we get you a new ceiling fan, I get a new car. A new big screen TV. No. A new grill. Now that we can do. It's the Home Depot Memorial Day event. Get free Omaha steaks with Char Royal Gas Grills, great buys on ceiling fans and air conditioners, plus use your Home Depot credit card and get no payments or interest till January 2003. It's going on now at the Home Depot. for DeFerrin to pit, but Giafone with stops moved into second place, and then getting you up to speed. Look what he did to DeFerrin. A nice move, got a great run off of turn four from that lap traffic that was behind DeFerrin, and now he's out in the lead. And that gave Felipe Giafone the lead of the race, so both he and DeFerrin should be in the pits any time now. Atari Leyendijk that he just moved around, who's currently 17th. Jill DeFerrin already on the pit road. Billy Boat is headed for the pits. So is Hornet. No changes are expected in the chassis of Jill DeFerrin. He radioed in and said the car feels good. Leave it the way it is. But there are going to be some tire pressure adjustments. But other than that, it's just fuel and tires for Jill DeFerrin and Tim Penske. Fuel hose. On lap 160, 40 laps left for Gilles de Perrin. 40 laps, one more stop. Well, they're hoping that they're not going to make any stops, I think, Paul. We've seen him run incredible fuel mileage, not only here, but at other races earlier in the year. But I can recall Nazareth just about a month or so ago where they gambled and they lost. I can remember Robbie Gordon here trying the same strategy on the 161st lap. Ran out of fuel on the last lap, given the win over to Kenny Brack. Here is Giafone, the leader in. Well, keep in mind now, Giafone, the last round of pit stops was three or four laps after DeFerrin. This time he's almost in sync with DeFerrin with 39, 38 laps to go. Routine service for Felipe, and he's back out. Giving the lead over once again to Alex Barron. Barron's going to take it another lap, which of course is what he did on the last round. Allenser Jr. makes it into the pits. Comes out of ninth place to do that. And Scott Sharp out of the race with Jerry Punt. And Scotty, the trail of smokes told the story. Did you have any indication at all that you were going to have an engine problem? None, Jerry. You know, the Delphi car was great all day. Uh, we would we'd lean the car out a bit, trying to get fuel mileage, and uh, that let uh, Philippe catch up to me. And uh, all of a sudden, out of turn one, it just sort of uh, a shrieking, shrilling sort of noise happened. I backed out of it. It was still running. I got back on it, but I knew it just wouldn't pull. Uh, smoke started coming out by then. It was over. Your neighbor, Scott Goodyear, told us, and we all knew you waited 365 days to come back here after what happened a year ago. How bad is this disappointment? It sucks, you know? I mean, the whole team was just operating so well. It's not like we had a, a junky car or some misfortune and we're trying to fight our way back. We had a great day, great pit stops, great strategy by Tom Kelly. Everything, you know, we were just cruising. I mean, I said that a couple times on the radio. We're just cruising. So um, I don't know what I got to do to get a good finish at this place. I love it. It's my favorite track, but not this year. Hometown boy hoping for a hometown win. It didn't happen today. You know, Alex Barron is getting some pretty good mileage out of this car. It's been 32 laps since his last stop. He's going to go another one. So Alex Barron remains the leader at the Indianapolis 500.
The legend was born in 1965 in the storied Swamp of Florida, and as befits a legend, it began with a searing question. Coach asked why we didn't go during the game. The players weren't adequately hydrated, and their performance suffered. As the Gators marched through the season, they drank a carbohydrate electrolyte beverage created by University of Florida doctors. Naturally, we called our stuff Gatorade. In conditions ever make a salamander sweat, the Gators thrive. Those boys drank that stuff, and they became a second-half team. I saw it in my own two eyes. In 1967, when the Gators won their first Orange Bowl, Gatorade had arrived. Today, Gatorade is the most researched sports drink in the world. And it continues to fuel champions wherever they're found. Humbly born on the hard-scrabbled gridirons of Florida, proven by generations of athletes. And just as the games never end, so the legend continues. You know what you never see in car commercials? Real cars. Cars that need new Castrol GTX high mileage. It protects against oil burn-off better than other leading motor oils. New Castrol GTX high mileage. It helps older cars feel young again. It's almost 200,000 people in over 40 countries working as one. It's 10 inventions every business day. And not all of them automotive. It's going from the Indy 500 to the Fortune 500. It's done by. We're slowing down. It's not an option. Gotta go. Rise and shine, Mr. Hayes. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins and Chris Rock are in the perfect summer movie full of thrills and laughs. Give me a towel. Bad Company. Rated PG-13. Starts June 7th. The all-new Toyota Matrix. It's something else. On the traumatic series finale of Philly, a stalker has targeted Kathleen and the man she loves. You said she was your wife. You stop this right now, you understand me? One of them will find themselves on the wrong end of a gun. Surprise! If you try to run, but it's strange, I won't miss. See how it all ends. The final Philly. ABC Tuesday, 10, 9 Central. Aerial coverage of the Indianapolis 500 is being provided by the Saturn's light ship. Saturn and its retailers invite you to stop in and experience the Saturn difference. But Alex Barron made a stop while we were away. It was routine, put him down to ninth place, but the rail back car was looking solid. Running in the front of the Indianapolis 500 for the second time. Thomas Schechter is the leader once again. You mentioned Alex Barron. I'll tell you what a great job that team has done. John Dick is the engineer. Tom Boy is the, is the manager. And those guys have done a great job in starting off that new team. AT&T race analysis at the conclusion of the 168th lap. Three cautions. There are going to be some people hoping that number is four before this race is over. Those cars out of the race, now including Scott Sharp. Felipe Giafoni, Paul Tracy. The fight is for second. Those guys have been having a great battle, Paul. Coming up the traffic every once in a while. There is that battle for second place documented for you in the last several laps. And as they come to the line this time, we'll, we'll track the field coming through. Goes Schechter. 212, his last lap. He's dealing with traffic. You see him falling back. His next job is to take a run off the turn down the straight. Paul Tracy and Felipe Giafoni. Well, they're running 220 last lap around in their battle. Then comes the Barrett, who was the quickest last time at 222 and a half. Everyone will tell you, in a 500-mile race, you race the first 50, then you kind of take it easy and survive to the last 100. Well, we're there. 
170 laps complete. I think that's changed over the years. The equipment's got so good, the teams have got so good preparing the cars, that drivers today, and I felt this for the past five years coming here, that this is almost like a 500-mile sprint race, and that's really what we've been seeing here today. Drivers going at it as hard as they can, and also going at it as hard for traffic as they can. And this really is almost like a 500 mile sprint race. And Scott, this is the way he is going to break down for Thomas Schechter. Look for lap 179. That's when Thomas will pit for a time stop. But they do intend to put on tires. Thomas is extremely upset about having stickers on the front of the car for that last stop. So they will go with scrub tires, and it will be a time stop, Gary, because they only need 24 gallons of the 35 that go in the tank. Michael Andretti has come into this race with such high hopes. He's been a contender. He's in fifth place, but there are concerns, deep concerns. Andretti extremely frustrated. He's lost the handling. He's gone to the weight jacker. He's trying to adjust the sway bar. It's not doing any good. He says it pushes, it's loose. He's all over the racetrack. They're trying to get him to hang on to the pit window, which should be opening up right about now. They may bring him in and try to make an adjustment. Michael, however, thinks something may be broken on the race car. Yellow comes out. We've got a car into the wall. Uh, your leader, Thomas the leader Schechter. again. Thomas Schechter into the wall. Tony Kanaan is the leader. Crash, and now it's Schechter. Paul Tracy will pick up the lead under yellow. Paul, the disappointment in Thomas Schechter right now, especially as you mentioned with his father. 1979 world champion Jody Schecker looking on. As we can see, hitting the outside wall into that safer barrier. He was already high, way off the groove on the racetrack when we came into view. You can see there he goes and makes hard right side compound. That's a pretty major hit. Jack Arud, you were keeping track on his two-way radio. Well, let's remember that he did not get the tires on the front of the car that he wanted to that last pit stop. They just decided to put scrubs on the next time this one. But here's what happened. He says the car went to heavy understeer immediately. No warning. And he said he thought, he just thought, that the way it went so quickly, Scott, could you, that maybe something broke on the car. But he is extremely disappointed. So Paul Tracy becomes the leader of the race, Scott. Well, as we heard from the report, the trajectory line that he was going off and hitting the wall looked like something possibly did break. Thomas Schechter is obviously okay as he climbs out. Right now at your Yamaha dealer, every motorcycle, every ATV can be yours. For only $49 per month at 3.99 APR. Plus, get up to $750 in free accessories on select models. See your local Yamaha dealer and get the Yamaha you want right now. Because a deal this good won't last forever. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. And for a simple way to keep your tires looking great, use Eagle One Wet Tire Shine. The Canon Rebel 2000. When circumstances change, just turn the dial, and you'll turn a snapshot into a photograph. Stuck. What the? So now you know how to stay in control. Do you mind? Thank you. The Rebel 2000 from Canon. This is the TD Waterhouse investment site. A crystal ball, it isn't. But the research and information you find here will help you make an investment decision you can be confident in. You want a fortune teller? Go to the circus. You want information you can trust? TD Waterhouse. TD Waterhouse. You're in control. 
Greg, this one you gotta oh. see. Oh. Oh. That's Leslie's first bath. <laughs> Look at that little tushy. That's, that's her little tushy, all right. <laughs> that cute little tushy that belongs to such an attractive, beautiful woman. Because hmm. it's grown up into something else. Nice, big, round tushy. You know, have you seen it? Have you seen it lately? You know. Is dinner coming soon, or is it... Next Sunday, it's the hottest television event of the summer. I'm sorry to try this already. It's not a movie. It's legal? It's real life. I'm so happy here. If I stayed here much longer, I'd go insane. It's cameras where they're not supposed to be. There are so many hot girls here, it makes me wish I was straight. It's television's first reality miniseries. It'll rock you. It will shock you. What a boy. She ran over 16 people. No comment. An ABC premiere event, The Hamptons, next Sunday at 9, 8 central on ABC. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Mobile One. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Here now, Bob Jenkins. Less than 25 laps to go in the Indianapolis 500 for the second time. The leader has crashed out. It happened earlier to Tony Kanaan. It happened most recently to Thomas Schechter. He crashed coming out of turn number four. Now with the caution on, we are going to be having pit stops. There is Felipe Giafoni, who enters the pits as the leader of the race. Paul Tracy is shown as second spot. And they have completed Paul Tracy's work. Bob, and they've got him marking away. Shilda Farron gets service. Felipe Giafoni, he pulls out of the pit area. Oh, they wanted it. It was a time to stop fuel only for five seconds. That would get them enough to the end. So a fuel. And a car sliding through the grass and losing a wheel up in the uh, north end or the uh, south end of the racetrack. DeFerrin. That is Gilles DeFerrin. And another incredible circumstance happens here in the late going. And Bob Jenkins, I'm down on the DeFerrin pit. They had to make this pit stop because they wouldn't have made it on fuel. They came in. And that stop a moment ago was 8.43 seconds for four tires and fuel, or should I say, three tires and fuel. The left rear rolled off of the racetrack as DeFerrin began to accelerate in the warm-up lane at the south end of the racetrack, and the wheel is still down there, while Gilles is trying to get the car back to pit lane to get another tire on and the resumption of the race. Down to Jackaroot. Well, Bob, Paul Tracy is a bit upset with what happened when that yellow came out. It seems that, according to Tracy, Felipe Giafoni pulled onto pit road in the pace car, picked up Tracy, and Giafoni passed Tracy to get behind the pace car. It got very heated before Tracy's pit stop, and it finally took John Anderson to say, look, Paul, calm down. Let's make the pit stop. We are going to win this race. Bob? Debris is being cleaned up on the uh, front stretch. You can see the discussion going on down on pit lane involving Barry Green and other members of Team Green. Well, Bob Jenkins down in the Jill DeFerrin pit. Uh, this is totally atypical for a Roger Penske team that had a great effort on Thursday in the pit stop competition. These two teams were in the semifinals together head to head, and uh, Elio Castroneves ended up winning it with a new world record at Indianapolis at eight and a half seconds. DeFerrin's pit stop a moment ago was even faster than that record that uh, Castro Neves set on Thursday. But we see the results as he is coming down pit road now and will bring his uh, Marlboro Team Penske car to a halt. Roger Penske on the radio with him. And what Roger is saying is, guys, don't just slap a tire on there. Check that hub. Check the rear of the car. Make sure there's no damage. They say it's okay. And now Jill DeFerrin is down and away. Let's check in with Gary. And Jill goes by the Michael Andretti pit where the crew held him for an extra period of time. 17 and a half seconds. Kim Green wanted the crew to thoroughly look over Michael's car. They're concerned that maybe a suspension part was showing wear or failure. They've changed the tires. We mentioned before he'd been working with the weight jacker and the sway bars. Now they're hoping that the magic will come back. Michael has been greatly frustrated. He has been dumped down to the eighth position at the moment. <laughs> Swellio Castro Nevis is shown as the leader at the moment. Indy Racing.
racing fans, you can win an all-access pass to next year's Indy 500. Just watch the remaining IRL races on ABC and ESPN, and one phone call could make your Indy dreams come true. For contrast, contrast, contest rules, log on to ESPN.com, keyword Indy Pass. Don't miss the Texas 500 on ESPN for the first of 10 chances to win. 177 laps completed. Back in a moment. One. Two. Three. Four. That's right. Four rooms installed. Now, Dish Network is at Radio Shack. And getting four different programs in four different rooms is as easy as a $49.99 activation fee. For a limited time, get up to four receivers professionally installed in the first three months of the digital home plan free at Radio Shack. That's clear digital picture and CD quality sound in up to four rooms installed for only $49.99 from Dish Network. Now at Radio Shack. Cindy says I'm supposed to eat well-rounded meals. It's rolling, isn't it? Sometimes you just need a dog. The Big Bite. Oscar Mayer goodness with a Frito-Lay Big Grab and a Pepsi Gulp for a buck ninety-nine. You know what you never see in car commercials? Real cars. Cars that need new Castrol GTX high mileage. It protects against oil burn-off better than other leading motor oils. New Castrol GTX high mileage. It helps older cars feel young again. Switch. Yeah. Introducing the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that switches from an SUV to a pickup. Good idea. Chevy Avalanche. Motor Trends 2002 Truck of the Year. Avalanche. Like a rock. I think about Jess every day. He used to call me, like, every 10 seconds. I'd have to use my cell phone. It's staticky. We lose calls all the time, which wasn't great for a long-distance romance. So I signed up for AT&T Unlimited. You can talk to any AT&T residential long-distance customer as long as you want for just $19.95 a month. It's like we're right next to each other. I've never had a relationship this long before. It's perfect. I'm excited. He's excited. I mean, I would hope to think that I'd marry him. But I'm just taking it day by day. <laughs> call 1-800-REACH-OUT. Experience the speed. Experience the passion. Experience the spectacle. The SAP United States Grand Prix. Experience the glamour, the excitement, the magic that is Formula One racing. Only at the greatest race course in the world. Get your tickets now for the SAP United States Grand Prix experience. at Indianapolis next time around they'll get the green flag and begin racing again 20 laps to go here's the restart order Elio Castro Nevis is the leader the cars on the right again are lapped cars Alex Barron is running in second position we could be in a situation where we see the first repeat winner of the Indianapolis 500 since Al Unser in 1970 and 71 we were going green however the caution is going to remain on we understand because someone threw a can onto the racetrack and so we will not go back to racing this time there is elio castro nevis last year's winner of the 500 who's out in front once again jackaroot and bob elio castro nevis can go the distance in fact did not come in to take on any fuel they feel that they are set tim sendrick says they want to become a two-time winner of the indy 500 gary well, it's interesting down here. This extra lap of yellow could be huge for both Castro Nevis and for Alex Barron driving for Larry Blair's team. We just asked Larry, are you good for fuel? How much is the yellow helping us? He said, stay tuned. But believe me, buddy, we're going for it. Vince? Morris Dunn told Felipe Giafoni, you're running third, but the two drivers in front of you have to stop. That may or may not be the case, but they're trying to give their driver confidence that he can win the Indianapolis 500. But they remind him, the restart is key. Be ready for the restart. Jerry Punch. And up in the pole, Tracy Pitt. They cannot make it either, Vince. They're looking at about four and a half to five. Uh, up where Dario Franchitti's been right next to Paul Tracy. And they're concerned about fuel mileage here a little bit as well. But as these laps, laps unfold, it'll be very interesting here for Team Green. Let's go back to Bob. Well, we now think they're going green. The car's coming down the back stretch. Elio Castro Nevis on the left. 
And now we will have, let's hope, 19 laps of all-out racing to see who wins the 86th Indianapolis 500. Paul Page and Scott Goodyear, it's all yours. Lap 180 has gone by, and 24 times the leader at 180 did not win the Indianapolis 500. Seven of the last 10 years, that's been true. Elio Castroneves is 22 laps from his last pit stop. Alex Barron is 15. And Paul, you start to put those numbers together, and those first two guys are gonna really push the fuel envelope. Not sure how it's gonna play out. They must be betting on another yellow. They head for the line. Catherine Nevis is the leader. Frank Keeney is just getting back on the lead lap. The last thing Catherine Nevis needs to do is race with Frank Keeney. Barron moves on Philippe Giafoni. Giafoni got around him on the restart, and now Barron wants to come back. Barron had a look there, but it cost him some speed coming off the turn. Now he's got everybody following him behind him. Tracy going around on the right-hand side. Eddie Cheever Jr. also starting to have a look. All of those guys with the inspection of the yellow and red car there, Redon, are in this fight. Franchini leads the field, not the race. Look at that girl, Tracy, Barron, Cheever. Well, usually when you get to 20 laps to go, you're really dealing with about two or three guys. But we said on the opening of the show, usually there's five or six you have to worry about. Well, today it's 12 or 15, and it always comes down to a great run. Right now, we've got the first 11 guys running all in the lead lap, and that's a pretty strong field. But keep in mind, like Elio Castro Nevis is concerned right now, is they think, and I accentuate think, that they can go the distance. They keep cavalierly telling me that they can go the distance. They keep telling their driver it's going to be close. And there comes Cheever on Barron. And Cheever goes to fourth. That's where that infinity power really pays off. Paul, and remember, Eddie Cheever has always maintained that you don't race until lap 180. Three laps beyond that mark, and all of a sudden, Cheever's getting a little chippy. His next target is third place Paul Tracy. Catherine Evans has almost three seconds on Giafoni. Paul Giafoni's crew continues to urge him on the radio. Let's go, let's go. Got to get Castro Neves. Let's go. Continuing to pep him up. Well, Felipe Giafoni certainly has the fuel for that pursuit. Castro Neves' fuel tank is the question mark. And Paul, if you look at the body language on the Marlboro Team Penske crew, they are very, very uptight. I think if I went up to Tim Sindrick right now and pinged him on the shoulder, it'd sound like a tuning fork. That's how tightly wound he is. Well, remember the last Indy Racing League event at Nazareth, where they predicted that the Farron would go to the finish and ran out on the last lap, giving the win over to Scott Sharp. And Paul, if you remember, Scott Sharp did the right thing. He kept the pressure on Jill DeFerrin to make sure that he'd have to use fuel up to try and stay in front of him. I Cheever. think the same thing's happening right now with Giafoni. Cheever looks inside Tracy. No good. Barron closes a bit on Cheever now.
look at this call. What a great race. One mistake by anybody, and they're going to lose the rear front. Oh, Cheever almost lost it totally. Had to come out of the throttle. Baron got around. Whoa, that was close. And I can guarantee you, even for a veteran like Cheever, his heart rate right now is probably pounding right through his suit. Outside, outside, outside. Van Hornish, who's Clear. not a contender in this race, comes alongside Cheever. Well, I'm sure he's checking to make sure nothing's flat spotted and everything's still pointing the right way. You can see Eddie trying to get himself back up to speed, has to get his self-composure back, maybe make a few adjustments inside the cockpit to change the handling of the car, either with the weight jacker, as they call it, or the anti-sway bar. It changes the handling characteristics of the car. That's his only option right now. There is no more pit stops to make any changes whatsoever. Paul Tracy, 7-Eleven car from Team Green is bearing down on the back of Felipe Giafone. The battle is for second. Catherine Nevis still has 1.7 over the second place car of Giafone. I can assure you right now, Castro Nevis is hoping for any type of a yellow. Right, they just need a couple of
Tony's team continues to urge him to catch Elio Castro Neves. They're also warning him about Paul Tracy being right on his tail, not to give up that position in the pursuit of Castro Neves to stay strong in the number two slot. So keep an eye on Tracy as he continues to try to gain on Giafone. And guys, here, I don't think he needs that warning. He's got nothing but Tracy in his mirror. Guys here in the Paul Tracy pit, uh, Barry Green just a moment ago was telling Paul to make that change to go richer, to go full rich. They don't believe Castro Neves will make it on field. They believe the battle for the win is between Giafoni and their car, Paul Tracy. But now Paul has been given the word. Full rich that time by. Go after him, make the pass. You'll win the Indy 500. And Barry, it looks like at the same time they've sent Dario Franchitti, the team car, to put more pressure on to Elio Castro Neves. Tracy and Giafone can both run full rich at this point. Five to go. And all Elio Castroneves can do is try to adhere to the rules set down by his crew. Make mileage. Make mileage. That's the transmission over and over again. Well, he knows what he's doing. The high system that... Nevis, whatever he wants to know. Fuel mileage, average mileage, total mileage. Paul, we got something brewing here, Castro. Here Nevis. comes Giafone. Picks up the toe off of Franchini. Can't make it work. As you can see, Tracy's Tracy getting up right now. Tracy now making the move. Tracy gets around Giafone. Castro Nevis just ahead. Franchini gives him both room. That was the radio contact from Barry Green saying, get to the left, get out of the way. They got a team car that might have an opportunity to win the Indy 500. Castro Nevis in a car that has to be running on fumes now with Paul Tracy all over the back end. And you heard Paul's radio before, go full rich. And what that means, full rich, the fuel's getting all the, the motor's getting all the fuel that it needs. It's going to produce maximum horsepower. Full rich is power. On to the front stretch in Indianapolis. Tracy. That's point. point flag next time. That's it. Leader's been told to use full rich if he has to. He just said, that's the guy. And in the Penske pit ball, they are sweating bullets, literally. They know the white flag's up next time die as Tracy stocks and closes. Tracy looks to the outside. Whoa, and a guard dribble right on against the wall. White flag, yellow flag are going to come out together. <laughs> oh, that is the race right there. Yeah, baby! He ran to just a spurt of fuel, and Paul Tracy's going to get it. To the previous lap. Unbelievable, but. Oh, baby, yeah. But he does have to finish. Good to say, Paul, that's get the key. Way. He's got to get around even under yellow, and there's still concern. So, Helio Castro Nevis got to get through all that debris. And the engine has to stay running all the way to the back stretch, down the front, around turn three, around four, and then he'll have it. It's not one yet. And they're telling him on the radio, go real slow, go real slow, and milk it for every, every bit you can. Sinrick on the radio, they're still very nervous, Paul. Wilbur Shaw, Maury Rose, Bill Vukovic, Al Unser, all have had back-to-back -back wins. Castro Nevis may be about to add his name to that list. Oh, agonizingly slow. And of course, Tracy looking for any, any opportunity. Any falter at all.
Team Pemsky, Paul. The captain played his cards and he won. Elio Castro Nevis is now a two time winner in only two starts. And celebrate they should. I wonder if he can make it all the way to winner's circle and jack a root. Well, Paul, we know what will happen if he runs out of fuel. He'll be climbing the fence somewhere. Gary Gerald. Tim Sendrick, how close was it? We crossed the line there with about .4 on the meter, and you never know where it is. So, How far does .4 normally get you? On a green lap, about uh, half a lap. Wow. How nervous were you? Well, it's going to be your day or it's not going to be your day at this place. We figured we didn't have a car to win where we sat, so let's just see what happens. Two in a row. What's the feeling like? It's unbelievable. I mean, the history of this place, it's been Alan for senior since 1970 and 71. This kid, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Thank you, Tim. Let's go to Jerry Punch. And I'm with Barry Greed and Barry, a little bit of controversy. You're saying your spotters and even your co-driver, Dario Franchitti, says your driver, Paul Tracy, was fast. Well, Dario wanted to get out of the way and not inhibit the race at all. He pulled over. He saw the whole thing. Castro Nervous was clearly running out of fuel, and he must have run out of fuel going into three. And uh, Paul just blew by him, and then there's a the yellow. So, uh, so from your viewpoint, Paul had already passed Castro Nevis before the yellow came out. We believe we passed Castro Nevis before the yellow came out. Let's go back upstairs. That judgment doesn't matter. Castro Nevis goes for the fence again. He may have been running out of fuel, but he made it to the finish in the extra lap in victory. The crowd loves it. He cried. Walk with me to Victory Lane. An emotional moment for you. And there is no fuel left in the car. They just don't seem to understand that. you right, man. I tell you. Oh my goodness. What a, what a great people. Sorry. We shared those tears of joy uh, on the fence. Can you describe your guy. feeling? That guy. Oh, Roger Penske. <laughs> we did it again. We did it again. What a job, huh? Fuck it, you want to. You want to. Yeah. Unbelievable. This may be the most unusual victory lane that has ever been held at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is a movement now for the Ford Warner, Warner Trophy. And Elio's mother comes. There's not much to be said. Just listen. Sister Katya. We've, we've, we've got to ask you, we've got to ask you, those last couple of laps, all we kept hearing was make mileage, make mileage. What was going through your mind? I tell you, uh, I didn't know. I was like, this is not the same as last year. Last year was harder because I have also back marks in front of me. And all of a sudden now I'm, 
I had in front of me a, a much more of a challenge. And I didn't know if I lift off, if I keep going. Well, guys, I did it. I did it again. How is that milk going to taste this year, Elio Castroneves? Taste. It's going to taste it twice. Twice. Twice better. Oh, my goodness. Good job, man. I, I have to thank this Marvel team fans, Cindric and Andy Bourne, and everyone, Rick Ryan. I mean, I mean, those guys are unbelievable. And obviously, Indianapolis. Guys, this is unbelievable. You guys, amazing. I love you. Oh my goodness, oh, I have no words, man. I don't know what to say anymore. I mean, you know, this is just, it's just a dream come true. And, uh, and uh, every time I'm thinking about. Well, let's get, let's get Elio Castroneves over for the ceremonial taste of milk and we'll go to, uh, go to Paul Tracy. All right, thank you, Jack. Uh, Paul Tracy, uh, gotta be uh, elation, relief, frustration. Uh, what a sensational run. It's a great run for the big Gulf 7-Eleven car, and I got to thank all our sponsors, Chevy and Klein Tools, and, and everybody involved in everything. Firestone. I didn't have a great car today, but at the end there, I caught Healy on the last lap. I passed him on the back straightaway going into three. I passed him around the outside and came around, and uh, you know they said that it was under yellow, but I didn't see the green was still up in my eyes. I saw the green, and uh, you know so we're going to protest and see what happens because I, I feel that I was ahead of him when it went yellow, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, earlier, and we heard you, uh, you were very upset about the caution that came out late in the race and that they were maybe in some passing under the yellow there. Yeah, well, Giafone, it looked like he was committed to the pit lane and went yellow again, and uh, I passed him on the track while he was in the pit coming in the warm-up lane, and then he came back and passed me around in turn one under yellow, and, and they gave him that position as well, so it's hard work racing those guys. They're not easy to get by, but, uh, you know, the crew did a great job today, had a good car, and, uh, you know, we're going to protest this thing because I feel I was ahead when the yellow came out. All right, we'll let you know what happens there. Let's go back to Victory Lane and Jackaroo. Well, Jerry, I've caught up with Elio Castroneves, and Elio, it's my honor to deliver you the milk of Indianapolis. I'm going to do exactly like I did last year. Six-year-old Brazilian has won the Indianapolis 500. We'll return for more of the Indianapolis 500 after this message and a word from our ABC station. Le peloton entre dans la ville, ils ne sont plus très loin de la ligne d'arrivée. Deux grands champions, Bornet et Stiefel, se battent l'un contre l'autre. Ils sont en tête, mais qui va gagner Bornet, Stiefel, Stiefel, Bornet, c'est très indécis. Ah, ça y est, la ligne d'arrivée est en vue. C'est Gordon, en fait, non. Je n'ai jamais vu une course aussi excitante. Chevy Monte Carlo, wherever there's a winner's circle, we'll be there. Monday, Bond is back, and his mission is out of this world. My God, what's Bond doing? I think he's attempting re-entry. Bonebreaker on the Bond Picture Show, ABC Monday. Here we are, outside the event. Everyone's been anxiously awaiting. Fans started arriving here yesterday. It's an incredible scene. This may be the moment we've all been waiting for. Yes, and here it comes. The Stanley Cup Finals, Saturday, June 8th at 8 Eastern on ABC. When reviewing the Lexus LS 430, Automobile Magazine said, no car in this class has more inviting leather, a more comfortable ride, a superior stereo, or a more logical navigation system. Perhaps this is why, for the second year in a row, Automobile Magazine has named the LS 430 the best luxury car over $40,000. To its owners, it's the best luxury sedan in the world. The LS 430, at Lexus of Toledo, Every day is a vacation day with a pool in your backyard from DNR Pool Sales and Poolside Shop. The Toledo area's best deal for above-ground pools, specializing in quality American-made pools at great prices. Pools from $629. Complete pool packages from $1269. Complete design and construction of in-ground pools and complete professional service. Let their 40 years of experience create a summer of fun for you and your family. DNR Pool Sales and Poolside Shop. Never before. It may never happen again. During Truck Month, get up to 3,000 cash back or as low as 0% financing on Ford's best sellers. 
Serious savings for serious buyers only. Up to 3,000 cash back or as low as 0% financing for up to 60 months. Plus, get $300 in genuine Ford accessories on any Ford F-150 or F-250 at no extra charge. But only during truck month. See your Metro Toledo or Northwest Ohio Ford dealer today. You're watching 13 ABC. The 86 running of the Indianapolis 500 continues on ABC Sports. Felipe Giafone qualified on the inside of row two, and he finished third today here at the Indianapolis 500. But it's not a very happy face, even though you're forcing out a smile. You were so close. What happened on the pass with Tracy? Um, I, I know. I mean, Frankie was was in the way there, you know, tried to help uh, Trace out. So at that point, I was trying to get by Castro Neves, and and uh, so then uh, I was too close, and my car pushed quite a lot, and uh, and then I had to lift, and Trace passed me the outside. But you know, I'm I'm really happy for the team, and happy even I mean for all the guys, you know. Um, but I really had a. a a car to win that race, and uh, if it wouldn't be, I think, Frankie, we could have had passed uh, Castro Neves because he was trying to to make the race, you know, because he was lean, and I didn't have any issue with the fuel, so we were good to the end. So I'm happy to finish third, but I knew that I could win this race. Felipe Giafoni and the Morris Nunn Racing Team. Bob? Felipe Giafoni finishes third in this year's Indianapolis 500, what a race it was. Elio Castro Nevis becomes the first repeat winner here at the 500 since Alinzer in 1970 and 71. Here's the unofficial rundown of the finishers. Alex Barron comes home as the best rookie, finishing in fourth position. Michael Andretti wound up in seventh spot, and the teammate of the winner finished in the ninth spot. There is Alinzer Jr. In the 12th spot, Ari Leyendyke ended up a lap down in the 14th position. The defending champion of the Indy Racing League, Sam Hornis Jr., had some problems. He finished in the 25th spot, and Greg Ray, former IRL champion, wound up in 33rd. Well, you know that Team Green, Paul Tracy, they have filed a protest regarding their position in the final standings. Now, at the top of your screen is the crash involving Laurent Redal, and we have synchronized our tape machines to the exact second. So Redon was crashing into the wall, Scott Goodyear, and at that point, Paul Tracy was running behind Elio Castro Nevis. Bob, you can certainly s clearly see that, and the other thing I'd like to point out on it, even though that Tracy thinks that he was ahead of him before the crash happened, the finish at the Indianapolis 500 is unprotestable, as I learned back in 1995. But we can clearly see here that Elio Castro Nevis is in the lead. Now here is in slow motion the pass that Ca uh, that uh, Tracy pulled on Castro Nevis at the end of the backstretch, going into turn number three. And you will see as the cars come around the third turn, we will spot shadow and show you that the yellow light is on. There's the yellow light right there. And Bob, that is certainly a violation of the rules, and Helio Castanavis certainly did win this race today. More in a moment from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Fresh beer is just like fresh bread. Beer is a food product, and fresh beer will always taste more drinkable. It'll be lighter, it'll be cleaner, and it'll be the very best beer you can buy. No brewer will argue that fresh beer is better beer. If you can get the freshest beer possible, you're going to get the very best beer possible. be over 100 degrees out there. You have any idea what that does to an engine? Need a motor oil for hot temperatures? We developed one. Pennzoil Synthetic resists thinning to protect engines in hot summer conditions. Try that after the sun goes down. Pennzoil. We're driving protection. It's almost 200,000 people in over 40 countries. 
working as one. It's ten inventions every business day. And not all of them automotive. It's going from the Indy 500 to the Fortune 500. It's Delphi, where slowing down is not an option. Gotta go. For some, the road is a Sunday drive. For others, it is a place to be driven. Today, there is a tire that embraces the attitude of both. The Firestone Affinity LH30. High performance and the wet-breaking benefits of Unity technology at an exceptional price. For a better Sunday drive. No matter what your Sunday drive is. The Affinity LH30. This is the beginning of a new century for Firestone. This summer's biggest thriller isn't in theaters, it's on ABC, and it's a mystery you can solve. These are the unusual suspects. One is definitely the mole, but none can be trusted. I don't believe any word of your story. Mole 2, the ultimate spy game, starts with back-to-back -back episodes this Tuesday at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. This is no game, this is World Cup. Ireland battles Cameroon, Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. ABC, home of the World Cup. Royalty, the palace, yachts, casinos, beautiful people. And through it all, we have a Formula One race in the streets of Monaco. On the pole, 2000 Indy 500 winner, Juan Montoya. Next to him, David Coulthard, who has won here in Monaco. And behind them both is Michael Schumacher in his Ferrari, a four-time world champion. And there is no love lost between this group. Coming up next on ABC Sports is the Formula One Monaco Grand Prix. Aerial coverage of the Indianapolis 500 and the surrounding Indianapolis metropolitan area was provided today by the Saturn Lightship. Thanks, guys, for some great shots from high above the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now, here once again is a documentation of what happened on the last lap. You see the cars of Elio Castro Nevis and Paul Tracy coming out of turn two and coming down the back stretch. Now we'll r roll the tape here and show you when the crash occurs on the left. Watch Laurent Radon crash. There's the crash. And now Paul Tracy later pulls out the pass Elio Castro Nevis. By the way, also involved in the crash was Buddy Lazier. We understand they are both okay. Let's check the AT&T race analysis. The winner, Elio Castro Nevis. We had 11 cars on the lead lap at the drop of the checkered flag. Five caution periods, 41 laps. The average speed of the 500 was 166.059 miles an hour. Now our Coors Light most laps led. Thomas Schechter led 85. We had 10 different leaders during the Indianapolis 500 today and 20 lead changes. We'll take another break and be back with more at Indianapolis where Elio Castro Nevis has won again. How do they see through the stockings? How do they see through the stockings? They're sheer. Right. But you're missing the point of the story. The woman's car is commandeered, stranding her miles from the nearest FedEx location. She's toast? No. Directly across the street, her salvation. Directly across the street? Technically, it was kitty corner, but stay with me. Is it a mirage? I don't know. Is it a miracle? Yes. No. This is one of thousands of FedEx Express drop boxes strategically located at post office locations coast to coast. Keeping the engines of commerce well lubed. Precisely. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. And for a simple way to keep your tires looking great, use Eagle One Wet Tire Shine. For years, 
the championship has eluded Bear Strober. But this year, Stroberg has overcome the brutal conditions and mental anguish of 15 days on the tundra. His dream is about to become reality. We are here at the finish line, and finally, Stroberg takes the trophy with holding. Chevy, wherever there's a winner's circle, we'll be there. Have you noticed? You hear something new at fountains today. People who think young say, Pepsi, please. The lively crowd today agrees. Those who think young say, Pepsi, please. They picked the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi. Pepsi. For those who think young, the right one. The modern light one, now it's Pepsi, for those who think young. One. Two. Three. Four. That's right, four rooms installed. Now, Dish Network is at Radio Shack, and getting four different programs in four different rooms is as easy as a $49.99 activation fee. For a limited time, get up to four receivers professionally installed in the first three months of the digital home plan, free at Radio Shack. That's clear digital picture and CD quality sound in up to four rooms, installed for only $49.99 from Dish Network. Now, at Radio Shack. All right, Barry Green back out of Indianapolis. We showed a moment ago that uh, Paul Tracy had not made the paid the pass when the when the accident occurred and had not gotten all the way by when the yellow came out. So Elio, I guess, would be indeed the winner. Yeah, Jerry. Uh, obviously, it looks like it was very, very close. You know, I just had a couple of drivers come down and tell me that he was passed, but you guys have got some pretty good footage there. I, my only question is when the yellow came on, but it, it appears that your people saw the yellow come on before he completed the pass, and if that's the case. Elio is in first. Okay, Barry, thank you much. Let's go to Vince uh, Welch. Vince? The day was short for Elio Castro Neves when you win, but when you're in the back of the pack, Sarah, you were 24th today, and it was a long day for you. Yeah, we lost radio communications in lap 20, and we were chasing the car all day. I mean, it started off pushing real bad, and then it got slimy and slick, and we came in and overshot it, and we just kept chasing it. It's real hard to describe it to the pits when you're having problems. Sarah Fisher, she started ninth today, finished 24th. And the Yamaha fastest lap during the Indianapolis 500 was way back on lap number 20 when Thomas Schechter went 226.499. Something, something to tell you. you. You first. No, you go. I'm not ready to get married. Okay. 